The automotive world loves a good sleeper, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a better example than this Volvo. At first glance, it may look like a pretty standard old Volvo 240. However, the more you look and the closer you get, the more things start to get a little bit suspicious. When you hear it start, though, a lot of questions get answered rather quickly. My name's Ross and this is my 1983 Volvo 240. So it has a 5.3 LS, well, LS. It's um, out of a Silverado iron block. Uh, it's got a sloppy stage two cam. It has Pac-12 valve springs and head studs, but the full rotating assembly underneath is all stock. It's got Deechworks 1000s injectors, with a Terminator X, got a fuel cell 15 gallon, and we run E85 and twin Walboro 450 pumps. It's got a 4080E with like 250,000 miles on it, and a shortened Ford 88 uh, out of an Explorer. Uh, it made 613 wheel horsepower and about the same for torque. We're running 14 pounds of boost. It's on gate. So it's got 14 pound springs in there and it is twin turbo. So it's got two of everything. We're, we were learning some things, but um, we got it dialed now. So we're running 255 wide uh, drag radials in the back and it still spins on the street. So it's great. I probably can't take it to the track because I don't have a roll cage put in it for uh, my harness, but we're working on that. This is far from done. I kind of fell into Volvos, kind of started out as a Honda Toyota kid. Um, this chassis was my first Volvo ever. Um, it had a turbo four cylinder uh, and a four five speed manual. If you look inside, the clutch pedal is actually still in it. And the wiring harness was bad. And so it didn't run a run, whatever. And so it, I parked it on the side of my place for a while and then in like 2016-ish, we decided it needs a V8 and it originally was gonna get a Ford small block that I built um, and a manual trans and then I found this LS for a really good price and um, picked it up and well now it has an LS. I'd like to kind of clean it up a little bit on the inside. I would like to get a roll cage put in it and so I could actually take it to a track. I have new suspension for it because when I bought the car, the suspension was blown. And guess what? It's still blown. I kind of want to just get it to where it's more driver friendly. It doesn't have power steering. It's mostly a straight line car. And if everything, if I can kind of get it aesthetically and more functional, then I'd like to maybe turn it up a little bit and see if we can get some more power out of it. I do not daily drive this car. However, I probably could. But uh, considering where we live, um, we do not have access to E85 very easily, and this does not get fuel mileage. So <laughs> a lot of Volvo people um, kind of brag on it. A lot of the purists do, and, but I think that's with every car brand. Uh, but I, the number one question I get asked is, why didn't I do it in a wagon, and uh, a Volvo wagon? And it's because I didn't have one at the time, and I had this that didn't run. So this is what we made happen. So now you can buy all swap parts for this. They used to have all these swap parts back in the late 90s, early 2000s. That company went away. And then just recently, there's another company that started making all these swap parts. So everything's bolt-in pretty much. But when we started building this car, nothing that you couldn't buy anything off the shelf. So uh, motor mounts, trans mount, are all custom fabricated. Um, the uh, manifolds are custom fabricated, which I could have bought turbo manifolds, but I didn't. Um, and the only thing that's off the shelf is the weld-in mounts for the Ford 88 from Giffen's Performance. 
Gibbons Performance sells all the swap parts now. So originally, uh, I started putting it together, uh, but uh, Charles from Cinder Track Fabrication uh, built the motor mounts, and then uh, Gap Tuning took over the project after um, it sat for a couple years. This has been like a six year long project. Um, I lost motivation. But yeah, the uh, gap tuning, which uh, they also closed down recently. Uh, they are the ones that built it, tuned it, and um, got it all together for me. So. Yeah. yeah. Is it terrifying to ride in? Want to go for a ride? Yeah. So I will note, I've been in this car before. It's been almost a year since I was in it. And the first time Ross had driven a car with this kind of power, he immediately floored it and almost put us into a wall. So I'm gambling a little bit going for this ride, but it's all for you, Motor Biscuit viewers. so much for tuning into another motor biscuit video if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit the like button and if you're not subscribed subscribe and hit the bell so you can keep up with all the automotive content that we're creating for anything and everything you could ever imagine automotive visit motorbiscuit.com until next time this is Braden Carlson and we'll see you in the next video